and welcome to Gargar Knits. My name's Anita and I live in South Wales in the UK and you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Anita Bowl and show notes can be found in the description box below. Today is Sunday the 7th of March and I am just coming to the end of a week off work and at the beginning of the week I had lots of plans of projects that I wanted to work on or complete or get started and uh, the more I thought of them the more I was not getting anxious but I thought I could write them all down in a list and that's the best way to do it and I ended up with 14 things on the list and I thought there's no way I'm ever going to get through that in one week and I haven't but I've done quite well I've got I've done six so far which isn't bad going I don't think and I've got the rest of the month to complete them. That's what I decided to do. I would try and get the 14 things done by the end of the month. So we will see at the end of the month whether I accomplish it or not. But there are two things that I have finished that I wanted to show you because I wanted to get them to their new owners. And the first thing is Matthew's hat. I have at last finished his hat. And this now is the third two by two rib hat that I've made although the other two have been for children and this one as you remember was in black so it wasn't my favorite thing to make and it is lovely and stretchy I used um, let's see I've got them all in my little notebook here so it's the two by two hat pattern by Angie and I used Stylecraft special Aran in black and I used four millimetre needles and first of all I used DPNs because I really like knitting in the round with DPNs but they weren't really long enough and the stitches kept sliding off the ends so I changed over to a circular needle that was short enough that I could still knit in the round and it's very stretchy and nice and, and long and then I was a bit concerned because I thought well I finished it now and the weather had turned really nice and sunny and warm but it's gone cold again now and the cars were all iced up again this morning so I think Matthew will need his hat still so that's good and the second thing I finished is a crochet item find it on my list now um, recently when Jodie was out shopping she said to me that she wanted to get some reusable face pads face cleansing pads and of course me being me said don't buy them, I'll make some for you. So I went on to Ravelry and I found a lovely free pattern by Becky Ferris. It's really simple. And the um, the yarn that they suggested was the sugar and cream. And I happened to have a ball of that because my sister-in-law sent it to me from America. I'm trying to hold the book here and show you. And this one is Potpourri Ombre. Oh, I don't think you can see. I'll put a picture in. It's really nice because it's cream and then it's got little pops of colour as you're crocheting along. So I have made her three of these little cleansing pads just for her to see whether she likes them or not. And then I picked up a little tube of um, face wash from Nivea just for her to use with them and the, the colours go but I don't think you can see because it's too bright but hopefully she'll like them and I haven't quite done them correctly it's too sunny I'm not complaining that it's too sunny because in the pattern you had to crochet into the third stitch I had to do some sort of stitch I wasn't really sure of so I just crocheted into the back of the loop and it sort of made this spiral effect that I quite like. And I'm not sure if you can see, but I will put some pictures in. So I want those to go off to Jodie and Matthew. And on my last podcast, I said I was only knitting that hat for Matthew because I loved him. And I had, tr I had, I got into trouble with Jodie because I didn't say I love her. She doesn't need me to say it, she knows it. So Jodie, I love you. And you are my favourite daughter. There. Right. 
that's me finished for now and I shall come back on at the end of the month and, we see, and we'll see how well I've done with my list. And just like that, it's the end of the month. Did I manage to finish all 14 projects? Well, with the help of my youngest grandson Jack's counting skills, let's find out, shall we? Ten's not bad, is it? And I did have some distractions because our building work is nearly finished and at the end I'll put a little compilation to show you um, how it's gone. Uh, there's still a few things that need doing and the little downstairs toilet, the tiling has been put up, it's not grouted but it's finished enough that I think you'd like to see. So I'll give you a little tour and also at the end my dad has been sending me photos through March of something that goes on in his village and the surrounding villages and it's quite funny and I thought I'd put a few pictures of that in at the end as well and I'll explain a bit about that later. So on with my projects. Number one was Matthew's hat which I've already showed you because I did a little clip earlier and that's finished. And number two were the reusable cleansing pads that I have already given to Jody, but it bothered me that I hadn't done the correct stitch that it suggested in the pattern. So I went onto YouTube again and found a different tutorial uh, to find, it was the third loop of a crochet stitch. And the first tutorial I looked at showed me something completely different. So. I don't know if that one was wrong, but the one I found that I used was much simpler and it's so easy. It's just this little stitch behind the crocheted stitch and I made three more. And all it does really is makes the, um, the crochet sort of chain a bit raised up. So I've made three more and I think the fabric is a bit denser. So when Jodie's using her cleansing lotion, she said it was running through the other ones a little bit so hopefully these would be a little bit better for her so I've done those and then the third thing on my list was to finish the sleeve of my lace cardigan which I've done and if you've watched before you know I am bored silly with this project and look what's happened look how long this sleeve is it's massive and the thing with this pattern, it doesn't tell you to do the cuff and then sort of do the increases and then knit to a certain length. It tells you to increase, say for example, after every 12 rows. And so it's like a counted rows. You don't choose how many rows to do. And because the decreasing for the shoulder or the top of the arm is at the top, I, ha I knew it was getting too long but I just had to keep going and the cardigan the actual sleeve head is here it's not it's not like a raglan so if I put it even higher than it would be <laughs> that I mean I like long sleeves but that is well I'm probably gonna have to undo it from this end which is going to be quite hard with this yarn and redo the cuff but then there's increases right from the bottom so I don't really know how that's going to work out and I've got to do a whole other sleeve and then adjust this one so I am persevering I'm not going to give up I'm going to finish it so that was number three number four was to do another square of my Barrett counterpane which is this here. I've done the plain square and I'm also halfway through, to be careful because <laughs> my great big ball of wool, I'm halfway through one of the patterned ones and as you can see I'm just starting to decrease now 
towards so I'm just past halfway and you knit from corner to corner. I love making these and I knit a few rows every morning after my breakfast before I get ready for work and I sometimes sneak a few rows in in the evening as well. Uh, but that's a long term project because that's going to take me, although they're knitting up quite quickly, it's going to take me a while. And I've got notes here because I've got to put the, do them in order. So I like things in order. The next thing was to complete my March cross stitch, which I have done here. And as I've mentioned before, Tina from Simply and Stitches is also stitching on these and she's doing them in, putting them in a picture frame each month and mine is going on a tablecloth. And out of curiosity, we timed ourselves to see how long it took to do the stitching. When you think, I did show you the March one, didn't I? Um, when you think how small they are and how little it is, mine actually took me three hours and 57 minutes. Although I didn't do it all the way through, I did stop and start. So I, I just stopped the timer every time I went for a break. And if you would like to see Tina's version of the cross stitch and how long she took to make hers, I will link the video below in my show notes. And then I had an upcycling project. So I had an old sewing box given to me by Martin's mum and I have revamped it so it's gone from shabby to chic and I put a I made a little video up of the transformation so I'll put that in here <music> A little while ago, I was watching an episode of Yarn Mugs with the, with the lovely Sarah, and she has got a love. Um, in her podcast, she talks about her knitting and crochet and her dressmaking, and she's learning to sew and she's doing really well. And her dress is beautiful, but she's finding she's getting a lot of off cuts from the dress fabrics and she said she's not going to use them and asked if anyone would like them so I said I would please and she sent me a lovely parcel full of all the different fabrics and I'm going to use some for English paper piecing and some patchwork I've got some plans for some of them uh, the first thing I made was a project bag and I'll put a picture in here because it has gone to its new home and I just cut strips and sewed them together and then I could place my template for my so, um, project bags over the top and cut around it. So that one's gone and this, the second, oh, turn my notes over. The second thing I made out of the fabric that Sarah sent me was a pair of jeans for Arthur, my Luna Lapin. And what I did is the patches, it's so dark I don't know if you'll be able to see, but the patches or the scraps of fabric I sewed together to make a bigger piece and then I cut the templates out for the trousers. He's very happy with them, although the waist is a little bit big, but um, I could change the elastic on that, but I'm not that bothered at the moment. So he's got a nice pair of jeans, his first pair of jeans. And I think it goes really nicely with the shirt that I've already made for him. And I've also got a pattern for a cable jumper. That was one of the projects that I didn't get round to this month, but I will next month. And um, Arthur, he's got floppy ears, Arthur and his clothes all come out of this Luna Lapping book. 
which is very popular and understandably so because the sewing projects you think these would be really fiddly to make but oh they're so much fun it's lovely i really enjoy making things for him and i do need to make the armchair that was the main reason i bought the book and i still haven't done it so that was number eight number nine is a dress a little girl's dress i promised jody's friends little girl long time ago over a year ago that i'd make her a dress and this is the bonnie dress and top pattern by viola lee it's a pdf pattern on etsy and i think it's about six pounds and it goes from 12 months to eight years old and i made it in cotton fabric that i bought on ebay relatively cheaply and it's got pepper pig all over it and the reason for that is later on in the year hopefully they're all going to Peppa Pig World so I thought this would be nice for her to wear when she was there and she's got little frilly sleeve caps and some elastic in the back and it's a really well written pattern and she's got some tips right at the back to tell you or explain how to put the elastic in and how to insert the, thr the frills and things like that and I did do the little piece at the bottom you've got an option to do that or not um, I've made it once before and it was a disaster but I printed the pattern off not to scale we'd had a new printer and I sent the pattern from my phone and you couldn't choose the scaling on the printer so I assumed it would just if you couldn't choose it would just do it as it was it didn't and it so <laughs> I cut all the fabric pieces out and wondered why it wouldn't all fit together it's because the pattern wasn't to scale but I'm really happy with that and I'll be able to give that to Jodie now and she can give it to her friend so oh, put that back so that was number nine number ten was from the Corinne Lapier kit the felt family kit felt mouse family and I have made Mr. Mouse. Oop. There he is. And he was such fun to stitch on. He hasn't got any clothes yet. And he was a really nice sew. It, his feet were a little bit fiddly. And that was the only thing really. So I need to make the rest of his family. And doesn't he look cute? Stood next to my little house sewing box. So there are all my 10 makes. I've rattled through them. It's taken me a whole month to get to do them all. So the four that I didn't get round to, that doesn't matter. I will push them into April. Um, so I shall put some photos in now, as I promised, of my renovations. Um, so a little bit of history. Our house is an ex-council house and on the side it's got a downstairs toilet, a coal shed and a room at the back that I think was the washroom and it's got a concrete roof that joins those onto the rest of the house and at some point in the past a front and back door had been put on the end of this passageway and although it's lovely to have that extra room it, it wasn't very lovely in there it was dark and mouldy and damp and the roof leaked and the two doors let in water underneath so it wasn't very nice at all and we've been here nearly eight years so I've saved and saved and saved until I had enough money to pay for someone to come and renovate them and I'm so pleased with what's been done so far and I should put the video in now and, well photos in now and you can have a look for yourself.
it's nice isn't it the trouble is it's making the rest of my house look pretty tired and shabby so what I've decided to do is I'm going to go one room at a time clean it through thoroughly sort everything out fix or paint or do things like that anything that I think needs doing in that room but I'm going to go one room at a time so it's not too daunting I'm starting off with the kitchen because it's right next to these new rooms and it's a teeny tiny kitchen um, so there's a few jobs to do in there and give it a good clean and I shall take you along with me obviously so you can share in my progress and that will encourage me to keep going because I've told you I'm going to do it. So lastly are the photos that my dad sent me through the month. So in his village and the surrounding villages every year they have a scarecrow competition and villagers make a scarecrow and put it in their garden for everyone to look at and everyone wanders around and sees all the different scarecrows and they pop up all over the place and it's a bit of fun. Uh, I think the local pub runs the competition. I don't think there's a prize but there is a winner and I have um, chosen a selection of my favourite scarecrows just to put here, just to put a smile on your face because we all need that at the moment, don't we? So I hope you enjoy looking at those. And that's it for this month. Take care and see you soon. Bye for now.